let's do some preparation for Endwalker. I haven't seen this video yet. Uh, Zeppelin's got a couple of tips for us, apparently. Let's see what's going on. Level new jobs fast and Endwalker prep. Hey Buns, we are one week away from Endwalker Early Access, and there is a lot of stuff that you can actually do right now to make sure everything goes smoothly. So I'm gonna be covering lots of different ways that you can prepare for ultra fast leveling of the new jobs Reaper and Sage. I myself do plan to go through the Endwalker main story as a Reaper, and so that means I need to level up fast, very, very quick. I'm also gonna give some general prep tips for Endwalker if you're not, even if you're not gonna level up the new jobs right away. So um, basically we, I, we had something for everybody in this video. <laughs> this is a video I'm partially making just for myself, my own personal use, because there's a ton of stuff that I've listed here that I will be doing myself. And uh, I wanna share that with you. Just make sure we all have our little moogles in a row for the new expansion. So first step, some leveling tips for Reaper and Sage. No right now you can go to Ralgar's Reach and you can spend Poetic Tomestone on augmented scathing gear that's maiming for you think that scathing gear is going to be better than whatever they come scathing gear is going to be better than whatever they come with didn't um didn't people t told me the other day that we were watching a video where someone had boosted that that's what they had gotten it's 15 item levels better okay for Reaper or healing for Sage. You can get this in Ralgar's Reach here at this NPC. And, I guess uh, I guess that boosting boosted gear is different than gear from higher level classes. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Don't buy the belt. Do not buy the belts because belts are going away in Endwalker. Belts are going the way of the dodo. Up, <laughs> I guess if you're a Viera, you can just bunton them up. You are also going to want to save up 600 Poetics in the event that they add the weapon here to this vendor, the Skaven weapon. They probably will do that for Sage and Reaper, but uh, just have those 600 Poetics ready in case that they do. You could stockpile gear from different Shadowbringers dungeons or get several crafted sets ready for 71 through 80. That might be worth it if you plan on dungeon spamming with a pre-made group that can just skip all the- If you're getting, if you're getting gear, I'd advise you to, you know, I, I think that you know, you'd, you'd get gear for like level 75 because particularly <clears throat> for Reaper, it's a DPS class. So it's not like you're going to be tanking or healing. So you, you're not going to need like super high level gear. So my recommendation would be like go for item, you know, stuff for level 75 because usually the, the, um, the tombstone gear will last you for like five levels because I imagine that there might be a shortage of tanks, plenty of healers and DPS, maybe not so many tanks. Have luck. Yeah. Oh man. Looks like my services are going to be in demand when Endwalker hits, baby. Hey, anybody looking for a tank? I'm your pocket tank. Yeah, right. Good luck with that. I'm going to be face deep into the bosom that is the msq <laughs> short cues for her, you goddamn right instant cues all day every day gonna be so good and i have all tanks at level 80 dude this is the best part too which is like i'm gonna be grabbing all of my tanks taking them all to level 90 boom Level three FC XP buffs ready. Now, if you have no idea how to activate those for your FC, I would recommend you check out this blog post. I'll put a link to it in the description box down below from the Astral Flames blog. This I is need to level up my FC because my FC only has like um, tier two buffs. And I believe that you can go up to tier three. So we don't have those yet. We don't have like the, the tier three buffs yet. I don't know how to get those an excellent guide explaining exactly how to set up the XP buffs for your FC. It can be a little complex, so I would recommend you check it out if you have no idea what you're doing. An alternative that I'm personally going to be using is the Squadron Battle Manuals. You get these from your Adventure Squadron, assuming you have unlocked that feature from your guy and company. You send your squadron out on missions, and they can bring some of these back. I already have stocked up quite a few of these, and it's a 15% XP buff that is just as good as the Rank 3 FC XP buff. Make sure you have your Endwalker pre-order earring ready for the XP buff from that. If you don't have that, you can use the Bajra earring instead. And make sure that you are fully rested and you have food ready to go I don't so you have never lose that food earring. XP buff. I will probably not do a lot of dungeon spam personally, but instead blast up to level 80 in the Bajan Southern Front. Now, XP buffs, like I mentioned before, do not- Wait, she's going to main Reaper? 
She's going to main Reaper. You know, I think that's actually, and to be honest, for people that want to do the, the new classes, I think that it's actually smart to, to delay, not to delay, but like, I think that people should look at doing the MSQ later as a good thing. I think content creators are the only people that are actually negatively affected by doing the MSQ at a later date. And even then it depends on, you know, what type of content creator you are. So like in my case, considering that I'm trying to break into Final Fantasy XIV with like my Monster Hunter slash Dark Souls channel, obviously being, a, being there as soon as possible is going to be something that I have to do. But I'll tell you right now, if it wasn't for that, I would actually prefer to play the MSQ like in a week or two from now. And let me tell you why. Because... Final Fantasy XIV is an MMO that you want to savor like fine wine. It's not, it's not the kind of MMO like World of Warcraft where in, in World of Warcraft I feel like it's actually kind of fun just seeing like a million people all fucking mobbing the same NPC and fucking like, just, just give me my quest, let's, let's go, let's go. And everybody's like just trampling each other's like, oh, let's go, and, uh, and, and Dirge and, and, you know, Thunder Fury, Blessed Blade of the Wind Seeker. And it's like, that's just kind of like part of that culture, right? So it's in a way, it's fun. But the way in which you experience Final Fantasy XIV, I think that, type of environment actually detracts from the experience i remember particularly it was uh patch 5.3 i remember that i was just like because up until that point i wasn't caught up so i was just like doing my quests and it was just me right it's just me going up to the npc sometimes there might be one or two other players there you go up to your npcs the world is not like flooded and you know it is that traditional story experience of Final Fantasy XIV. And then when 5.3 rolled around, which is when I was caught up and everybody was doing it, now is streaming the thing, they won. I jump in there and there's like a million people mobbing this NPC. And I'm just like, well, that's a little bit immersion breaking. All right, I guess I'll, uh, I'll join the crowd here. And, and then, you know, the cutscene starts and there's nobody there and it's just you, right? So... It's just, I actually think that people who are waiting for like one or two weeks, they're going to have a significantly better leveling experience than people who are doing it right at the start. Hey, Nox, what's up? Can't wait for all the Reapers spamming their skills like Dark Knights on Ishgard. Got a brace for spoilers, I guess. Yeah. Are you the wife or the OG? What? <laughs> Black Friday 2018. <laughs> Black Friday was terrible, dude. Black Friday was so bad, Knox. Like, we didn't have any deals whatsoever in Portugal. But anyways, that's now, now I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that, that's my thoughts. Like, I think that people, you know, leveling later, they're going to have a much more chill experience than people leveling day one. But yeah. Not work in Baja, but that's okay because it already gives pretty bonkers XP. Like this is going to be extremely efficient leveling method. And uh, if you don't know about Baja at all, this is an in-game zone that will sink your item level and gear stats up to level 80 stats. So this would actually, you know, for the, if you're doing this, you don't actually need the gear. Wait, you still have to level up the 71 to get into Baja though. And it's a super duper efficient leveling method. Like there's going to be so many people <laughs> in here whenever the expansion launches. You do need to be level 71 to enter and you need Shadowbringers story completion. There's a lot of other stuff that you need to do to unlock it. If you haven't oh, done it already, I would Latori. get to it quick uh, because there's quite a Ooh, bit. Ooh, the Ivalis raids. It, it was, this was funny. The other day I was telling Q, Q, you got you to gotta, you gotta go unlock Bazja. And he's like, okay, how do I do that? And then I started looking through the quest and I'm like, well, you got to go back to Stormblood and do Stormblood raids. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry about that.
<clears throat> all here on screen. And if you want to see what the requirements are, you can just pause to read through them all and make sure you got everything done. Wondrous Tales. So this is a really hot tip. This is a hot, hot tip, okay? The Wondrous so Tales book? This thing gives a lot of XP. And uh, basically all you have to do is go Half to this little girl and be her hired assassin. <laughs> so like, yep. get the book from her. After you've unlocked it, you need to unlock this feature. Keeping up with Yalopo's Aliopose is the quest, not Uh And she will show you who to kill with these pictures on the side of the book. You can easily solo unsync a lot of these, like Howling Eye Extreme. I can just solo unsync that. And on then you can use second chance job. points to get the you rest. You can then use the retry button to redo something that you've already done. So you can get another sticker for it. Here you can see I did one level 80 dungeon. I got it's just like playing Samurai. You get the stickers. Got one sticker for it, but if I want to do level 80 dungeon again to get another sticker, I just click retry and then I can do so. The goal here is to get nine stickers, and once you have nine stickers, you can turn the book in for a buttload of XP. IT Ulkiora, that is literally and factually incorrect. Just yesterday, I did Orbone Monastery as a healer. Just letting you know that you're absolutely wrong, okay? Just yesterday, Orbone Monastery as a healer. You can get a new Wondrous Tales book every week, and once you have a book, you can keep it for two weeks. So what this means is, assuming you have early access for Inwalker from the pre-order, you, you can, can go still get the get book one right this now. Tuesday. The book that came out this week. Get all nine stickers, but don't turn it in yet. Wait and return it in at return it in turn it in as a sage this or Thursday? reaper this on Tuesday? december 3rd okay early access you will then be able to get another book for that week and finish that one too before the next weekly reset which means a ton of xp very very fast if you don't have early access well you could just prepare the wondrous tales book that's going to come out next week to turn in after the official launch but uh, basically this is what i am going to be doing next prepare your challenge log. Now, this one might be a little difficult if you play uh, a lot because no, not, some of the I'm entries you might just that. accidentally finish. Dude, okay, th this is too much. Like, this is too much, all right? Like, are, are you really going to do this type of stuff? I think, I mean, look, if you want to do it, go ahead and do it. But it's like, I think this, because I still like playing the game to have fun, and it's like, oh, I feel like doing a dungeon. No! 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 We capped the dungeons. Now we gotta wait. <laughs> it's like, no, I can't do that, dude. This is this is savage min maxing. But hey, it's it's a good tip for someone that wants to actually savage min max every aspect of the experience. It's definitely a good tip. Normal play, but assuming you have the early access, once your challenge log resets next week, so this is a thing that resets every single week with the weekly reset. So once it resets for the week of November 30th, you want to get some of these to almost done, but not quite. Okay, so feeling lucky. You'll want this one at two out of three. Dungeon Master, you'll want at four out of five. For the Fates one, you'll want this at nine out of ten. And um, you could do the get the Guild Hess ones ready. The Player Commendation one, get that to four out of five. Just keep a close eye on it because then uh, once early access, access comes to around, yeah. you'll then be able to log in on Reaper and Sage and do like one duty roulette dungeon, get a ton of XP, do one, uh, well, that will count towards your dungeon master, do one player accommodation and you get a lot of XP and do one fate. So you will just like rack up a whole lot of XP really quickly because you prepared it beforehand. Uh, so I'm definitely going to be doing this. Pixie Beast Tribe quest. So go unlock these now if you haven't done so already because they oh, yeah. give insanely good XP and each quest takes like a minute to do. So it'll make you level up quick. You will also want to go and pick up side quests. Now this is probably optional because we don't know how much side quest XP is going to be buffed. I did hear that it would be buffed and since I have absolutely nothing better to do, I will be filling up my journal with as many Shadowbringers side quests that I skipped as possible. I will finish them but I will not turn them in until after Inwalker early access and then I'll hop on Reaper, turn them all in Dude, in order to Reaper she is going wild. Right along to general Endwalker preparation. So this is less about just power leveling Reaper and Sage and more about just smart things to do to prepare uh, for the expansion. So first of all, 
think about spoiler protection methods for yourself, both in the game and outside the game. Be wary of shout or yell chats, maybe switch your chat. Here's, here's how you protect yourself from spoilers. Once Endwalker comes out, get the fuck out of Twitter, get the fuck out of YouTube, get the fuck out of Twitch, get the fuck out of everything. Just leave. Just leave the internet. That's how you do it. You just leave the internet, dude. It's that simple. Just, just leave. And probably get rid of chat as well. Like, get rid of your, your chat screen. Just like, just do it. Just, just, just get the fuck out. That's how you do it, dude. Because, uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty wild. I'm, I'm probably just going to turn off in-game chat. So, like, look, when I'm doing MSQ, I ain't replying to nothing. I'm actually, I'm even scared of looking at chat, but we'll see how that works. Excuse me. Also, Nox Tom, thank you very much for being grossing us for 18 months. Tip of the hat. Appreciate you, brother. To the battle tab. I always do that whenever there's new story content just to completely protect myself. And I set myself to busy so I cannot be whispered by random trolls. Titles in the past have sometimes been a little spoilery, so maybe turn off titles for now. Um, I would also stay off social media as much as possible. I know easier said than done, <laughs> but um, there might be Mental world, thank you very much for the bits. thumbnails Tip on of the, the YouTube videos. Like if there's a big character death. By the way, by the way, for those of you that are curious about how I'm doing things on the YouTube side of things, because I'm I'm pretty sure that I'm going to be streaming this whole thing on the YouTube side of things. I I'll be honest, I actually would prefer to stream it here. But quite simply, as you can see, I'm a pretty small streamer. I'm a very small fish in a very big pond. And there's going to be a billion people streaming it on here. And I'm just going to get buried. And that's the main reason why I'm, I'm doing it on, on YouTube. And in case you guys are concerned about like thumbnails or anything like that, I'm going to come up with like one thumbnail that's going to include my character face, maybe the moon somewhere. And it'll just say like Endwalker hashtag one or something like that or end walker live and that's it there's not going to be any spoilers in my titles there's not going to be any spoilers in my thumbnails the only spoiler will be if you click the video if you click the video hey that's on you dude that's that's fucking on you <laughs> everybody's going to be talking about it and i feel like that's going to be very difficult to avoid so just stay away from social media twitter facebook youtube unless it's my channel, of course. <laughs> I can, you should only watch my channel. Mine is the only safe channel. <laughs> hey! The fuck, Zeppla? That's a little bit selfish. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. But I will give spoiler warnings um, anytime that I'm going to be talking about spoilery stuff, which I probably will uh, after the expansion comes out because there's going to be a lot to discuss. If you want to turn into a bunny boy for Endwalker, you want to use your Fantasia before the servers go down so that way you can immediately log in and change your race and or gender. But if you haven't decided yet how your bunny boy should look, consider downloading the benchmark where you can um, go into the character screen character creation screen for male viera and you can save that appearance imagine being a bunny boy imagine being a bunny boy dude data and use it on launch you should clean up your inventory what do you mean too many spoilers here what three you can refer to my bag cleanup guide if you need some help for that. But uh, basically, like, if, you, if it can go in the armory chest, it goes in the armory chest. Make sure you're using your Chocobo saddle bag. Go through your glamour dresser. Organize your retainers. Clean out everything. Um, though, <laughs> I know how hard it is. Like, my glamour dresser is at max capacity right now. I have no idea. I don't know what to do. Get your retainers leveled up if you can. Um, definitely don't buy new retainers just for extra glamour space. I won't be doing that. Finish leveling things up or at least boost yourself barely into the next level because there is going to be that mid-level XP reset. I'll put a link to the lodestone post that explains all of that in the description box. But basically, if you are through a level, like if you're halfway through a level, uh, the expansion will reset you to the start you lose of that your level. Levels. All the XP is going to be reset to the start of levels. So make sure that you are at the start of levels so you don't lose a ton of XP when the expansion comes out. The Moogle Tombstone event will end with Endwalkers. Nox, people would sooner make me do a Lalafell than a Bunny Boy. And I'd enjoy the Lollafell more too. Lollafell's pretty cool.
official launch. So make sure that you get everything you need from this event before maintenance for 6.0. If story is a big priority for you, I would recommend that you do the coils raids story, at least on sync, so you can see all those cutscenes because it's bound to be relevant in 6.0. Also recommend doing the Omega raids story. You can do that in New Game Plus. I'm currently doing that and I can already see that there's a lot of stuff that will definitely be relevant. As for the economy, like guild making tips, because of the huge numbers of people that are gonna be doing the Bajan Southern Front, all the loot from there will become much cheaper. All the prices will drop because of the huge supply that's gonna be suddenly injected into the market. So if you there are- Guys, I need to grab like seven of you and we need to jump into Bajan cluster farming. I wanna get that stupid robot. I still don't have, not this one, this one I have. I want the other one. The dumb one, the big dumb robot. I want that one. Are rare mounts that you have from the boxes or rare hairstyles or other rare loot, sell it now. I would recommend either you sell it now or you expect to hold on to it for a long, long time. If you want rare stuff from the boxes, like the mounts and things like that, um, wait to buy until after the expansion is out because those prices are going to plummet. Okay, so <laughs> stonks. Also, Unreal Trials are going to be going away until patch 6.1, so all of the rare loot from Unreal Trials that you buy with faux leaves will go up in price because there will no longer be a way to get faux leaves until patch 6.1, so keep that in mind for buying and selling of that Unreal Trial loot. Do get a set of fresh, crisp, level 80 gear ready for the job that you want to do the Inwalker main story on. You can just drop some tombstones on it here in Yulemore. And actually, while we're on the subject of tombstones, keep in mind that uh, some of the scripts in tombstones will be changed. I'll put a link to the lodestone post that goes over all that. Pretty much the same stuff that happens every single expansion cycle to cycle out the old tomes and bring in the new tomes. So if you still have Phantasmagoria tomes sitting in your currency tab, you want to get rid of those. So that just if you still have Phantasmagoria tomes sitting in your tabs, I would suggest removing the cobwebs from your goddamn inventory. Jesus Christ. Like, seriously, dude, come on. Phantasmagoria tomes? Clean up the cobwebs, man. What, what the hell? Oh, man. Hey, President Donald. What? Donald J. Trump? <laughs> How you doing? This about wraps things up for all of the main things that I would definitely do before the expansion, stuff that I'm going to be doing. Like as soon as this video is done, I'm gonna start like getting all my side quests ready and getting my Wondrous Tales ready. Is there anything else that you think is really important in the preparation for Endwalker that I didn't mention here? If so, please let me know in the comment section down below so other people can see it and it might be helpful to us all. Thank you so, so much for watching. I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please consider supporting the channel on Patreon or on Twitch. You can also support the channel for free just by clicking the subscribe button or by sharing this video with your fellow warriors of light thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye bye undeniable damn that was the, hey bud everybody's jumping in on the on the really aggressive cuts i I'm, i've been doing the same thing though i've been doing the exact same thing it's good stuff uh i can't really think of anything else to like prepare for end for end walker i feel like a lot of the things that she's talking about are exp based which keep in mind that those are important if you're doing like a level 70 job so like if you are doing sage or reaper then sure you can go stack up on all that exp stuff but if you already have a level 80 class you don't need to stack up on EXP because the MSQ is going to take care of that. Like, you just do the MSQ and you'll probably be level 90 long before you finish the MSQ. That's usually how it goes. So, just something to keep in mind because you might see all this and be like, oh my god, I gotta go stack quests and do all of these things. And then you're like, but wait, I'm, my character's already level 80. I actually don't need all of this extra experience. I'm good. <laughs>